Hello, everybody. <laughs> wow, I say two words and the heckling already starts. That's awesome. So if, a few years ago, I was supposed to give a talk in Houston about Dance or Two, but I caught COVID a couple of days before and I had to cancel. So this is, <laughs> this is me paying the... <laughs> So I guess this is <laughs> I guess this is me paying the community back because I wasn't planning on giving a talk this time, but I'm happy that I'm able to today. Um, so uh, Dancer 2.0 point oh my no George Takeys were harmed in the making of this slide or this presentation, um, but there's a new version of Dancer 2 on the horizon, and you know what that means, party time. Um, so. Full disclaimer, it is not released yet. Um, also part of that disclaimer is we're only about a week or two out. Uh, either everything I'm talking about today has either had a pull request merged or there is a pull request for it. So for once in my life, I'm not talking out my ass. Um, how did we get here? Um, well, what I'd planned was to do a little point release before we got to the conference this year and make a little lightning announcement between talks and go on with my merry life of just being a conference attendee. That's not what happened. Merged a few PRs, fixed a few bugs, posted a few more pull requests, saw some old tickets out there saying, hey, we're actually pretty close to getting some more stuff done. I can get these done easy peasy. Famous last words, as many of you know, you say that and things start to snowball a little bit. But anyway, just some quick stats. Um, there's almost 30 tickets or pull requests that are going to be addressed by this latest version. Um, most of these were not trivial. Uh, and some of them broke backwards compatibility, which is why we're changing the big number on this release from 1.0 to 2.0. So what's new? Um, templating engines. Dancer 2 2.0 now has 100% fewer templating systems in the core of the framework. Doesn't mean that we have fewer template engines, the difference being we're not implementing any templating in core now, but we still have the adapters for all of the templating systems that we've supported before. Um, so a long time ago, in the early days of Dancer 2, we created a forked version of Template Tiny that had two features that were not in what's on CPAN. Uh, one of those was implementing code refs and templates. Um, the other one was changing the tag syntax. Dams did a pull request a lot of years ago that got either ignored or denied. Um, and since that time, uh, Karen Etheridge has taken over maintainership of Template Tiny, who is really receptive to us getting rid of our forked version and making our changes part of the core of Template Tiny. And so uh, thanks to her, that's what happened. Um, so Dancer 2 template uh, fork Tiny is going away and we're just using the core Template Tiny now. Um, the other thing is Dancer 2 template simple is getting split into its own CPAN distribution with this release. Um, from our own experience in talking to our user base, uh, through our own work with our own projects with Dancer 2, it's been our experience that people that were still using Dancer 2 template simple were mostly people that were still migrating off of Dancer 1. If we are wrong about this, it's Ruth's fault. <laughs> More seriously, <laughs> If we're wrong about this, tell me, because this is a change that is not too late to reverse. Um, but in taking simple out of the core of Dancer, most of our internal use of templating was actually done with Template Tiny anyway. So it really made a lot of sense just to get simple out of the way and to do the rest of the implementation of what's in Dancer 2 uh, with Template Tiny. And uh, this change allowed us to do that. And as you all know, non-existent code is the easiest code to maintain, and the best. There are no bugs in code that is not there. Perhaps my favorite feature of this 
is the new way, our new configuration system. Um, I created this mess in 2013 with a little pull request along the lines of, I hate YAML, let's use config any. And it seemed like a good idea at the time. And then it... Something that's not my fault. <laughs> there is a first time for everything, yes. <laughs> and so that led to a long series of poorly thought out decisions. And um, it left us with the mess that was there. And um, however, with Dancer 2 2.0, the current functionality is still the default. We haven't broken anything. But what it allows for is you can specify multiple additional configuration re readers that run in order. And I'll show you how to do this in a moment, but it's done through environmental variables. You um, set them up in your environment, and um, it'll read those configuration readers in order. Um, you can also use our existing configuration mechanism to bootstrap other configuration readers. I'll show you how to do that in a moment as well. Um, so using environment variables, this is all you have to do. Um, uh, config.any is our default reader, so that's specified. And then I just made up config reader custom, and then you just start your application. And then it's gonna look for those configuration readers, and those configuration readers are gonna do whatever that they're programmed to do. And then your application will start as you're used to. Um, Here's just a sample one that I made up. If you like configs, oh my god. Um, this is how you would make a config reader for it. It's just a, a, a basic Moo class. Um, you give it a name and you give it a read config method that says, how do I want to read my configuration? And then you've got a new config reader. And then I mentioned being able to use our existing configuration mechanism to bootstrap additional configuration readers. And so there's a new config setting um, in a YAML configuration file called additional config readers. Uh, you just give it a list of the full package name of your config reader and whatever arguments it's expecting, and you get those. So in this case, I made up a fictitious SQLite config reader, and then another one that uses the module JSON config. And you can put as many of these as you want it does have some recursion detection too. Uh, we did notice in our, in our testing of this pull request that there were some instances where your application would get itself into a bit of a death spiral starting up and would never finish starting up. So we do have some protection built in to protect that from happening. We've also got some pr improved app scaffolding. Um, so one of the things people have asked us for a lot is to be able to generate a new application based upon the tutorial. Uh, we have a new tutorial in this, which I'll get to in a moment. Uh, but you can specify the name of an app skeleton that you want to use, and Dancer 2 will create a new application based on that. Um, one of my biggest pet peeves was the fact that our default app skeletons and created files for publishing your Dancer 2 apps to CPAN. In my experience, nobody writes Dancer 2 apps and publishes them to CPAN. And so this was just unnecessary for me. And so uh, we added a command line option to not include those files when you generate your application. In the spirit of there is more than one way to do it, however, you can still make your own app skeletons that don't include those. And so then this this option won't do much for you, but um, for those of you who build new applications off the default skeleton, it's just a little nicety for you. New documentation. Um, you math geeks out there might appreciate this one. Uh, a few years back, we ran a survey of our community, and one of the things that we asked them about was the quality of our documentation. Exactly 99 people responded to this set of questions. 33 of the people, 33 people who responded absolutely loved our documentation, 33 absolutely hated it, and 33 didn't give a crap one way or the other. But we figured those numbers were such that maybe we should spend some time improving our documentation. And so, um, thanks to the Pearl and Raku Foundation, uh, we received a grant to be able to rewrite the documentation, and that got us all sorts of good things. Um, 
We got a new core manual for Dancer 2. Um, we got a new tutorial that actually follows our own standards for once, which is nice. Um, it's a good example of how to build Dancer apps. A new deployment guide, a new cookbook, and all of it is better organized. Uh, it was kind of a hot mess the way that it was, and so we spent some time actually making documentation that you could find your way around. Um, and there's some other goodies, too. Um, improved logging. Um, historically, you had no way of knowing, was this happening in a hook? Was it happening in a route? Um, we added a lot of logging around hooks in Dancer 2, so now you can see when you're entering and exiting a hook, so you can better follow um, the path through your application. Uh, pluggable data sanitizing. Um, in development mode, we're going to dump a bunch of information about what's going on in your application. Uh, we used to have some OK code in there for scrubbing out like usernames and passwords and that. Um, we've replaced that with data sensor. Um, but in addition to that, we've made it so you could plug in your own code for being able to sanitize things in a way that makes sense for your application. And just a bunch of other doc and bug fixes. Things that won't be in 2.0, which I was hoping was going to make it but isn't going to, um, moving to throwable for our errors. Um, any of you familiar with Dancer 2 core error? Well, anyway, it's a big pile of poop. Um, <laughs> it sucks in a lot of ways that I'm, I'm not going to get into right now. But um, uh, we wanted to, but there's just too many cats to herd before we do this release. Um, um, and there's a lot of pathways for producing errors in Dancer 2, and we just those of us working on it just did not feel confident that we could get this in time for a 2.0 release. But uh, provided that we can do this in a backwards compatible way, you'll likely see it in 2.1 or 2.2. So what's next? Um, don't really know. Could be Dancer 2 3.0, it could be Dancer 3. A few of us have had some internal discussion about what's coming next for Dancer. Um, we don't have a lot of good answers yet, and certainly not ones that I'm ready to share uh, because they're not fully formed. Um, but this is where you all can kind of help out. Um, it'd be really nice, uh, those of you who use Dancer, if you have ideas as to what you would like to see and what direction you'd like us to go, um, we really thrive on that feedback, and it'd be really great to hear from you. Uh, final thoughts, a lot of you have asked about this amazing t-shirt that I'm wearing, uh, Blame Ruth. Um, <laughs> you can go to tyourpassion.com to order this shirt and other good ones, but uh, I would encourage you to talk to Ruth um, about the whole story behind Tea Your Passion. Uh, anybody have any questions or thoughts they would like to share? Okay, I'm going to take that as a no. Just wanted to thank you for your time today. And uh, um, if you have any future thoughts about Dancer, good, bad, or otherwise, uh, please find me or Ruth here at the conference. And thank if you. If, if you got extra time, do you want to do a release then for 2.0? <laughs> I, got, I got five minutes left. Why not? <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>